Hi, welcome back. How to Chris here. Today I'm going to share with you how to lay out roof rafters using only a pencil, a piece of paper, and a ruler. Now, there's nothing wrong with using all the right tools, a square, carpenter square, a bevel gauge, a speed square, stair gauges on your square, and all that stuff. Some people even have a booklet that tells you all the sizes. There's nothing wrong with doing that as long as you get your roof built. This, this scenario is if you didn't bring your square or you're not having your, your equipment that you usually use is not present. So if that's the case, you gotta be able to still get that roof built. And you, if you're familiar with only doing it with the tools, like I would say most people are, then you're going to have a problem. So I'm going to show you how to lay out a roof rafter without any any fancy tools. These are just these are tools, a ruler and a pencil. These are tools. The paper is your material. We're going to turn it into a tool. But these are really just primitive tools compared to what a lot of people are using. I do this also with stairs as well. So I want to share this with you. And this this will separate a carpenter who knows how to do this with the tools from only from a carpenter who can do it with the tools as well as without the fancy tools. So I'm going to do this as quick as possible. So in case you're in the middle of your project, you want to get your roof built. If you want something more comprehensive, you can check out my other video, which breaks down things more and has the specialized equipment that I'm using. So let's get started. Here's the two by six I just brought into my workshop. I'm gonna show you how to lay out this with just using a pencil, a ruler, and a piece of paper. First step is we gotta make a template. So I'm gonna do a 612 pitch roof. So what we have to do is we have to put some marks on this paper. First thing is actually move this back out of the way and let's mark this up. First thing you do is 12 inch mark along a straight edge. Let's open this up. I'm using a folder. You can use cardboard as well. Mark along the bottom edge 12 and put a 12 inch mark. Mark along the other side up six inches because we're doing a 612. Take your ruler, lock it, and just bring this line across from the two marks you made. Now you're going to be doing this if you don't have all your tools on hand. Next thing I'm going to do is cut this. Now you might say, well, you're introducing another tool, a knife or a scissor. No, I'm going to just, I'm going to, I only wanted to use three items. So I'm going to just fold it over and I'll show you how we can cut this out. Okay, so I'm just going to fold it back and forth a few times. What you can do is just press it with the pencil and fold it again. Press it again. Do that a couple times, it'll, it'll tear easier. Let me just tear it. Just get it started and then just tear it. So again, I I didn't want to introduce another tool here. So it's just a ruler, a pencil, and a piece of paper. Ok, 
Okay. So now you got that marked out. What you're going to do is you're going to write on here. It's a six inch rise, so we're going to put six. And then it's going to be here is the 12. And this, this is that measurement that you see on your square. It'll say, so this is a 612, so this is 13 and 3 eighths. On your square, it'll say 13.42. So that's the same thing here, 13 and 3 eighths. I'll write that, write that too. It's 13 and 3 eighths. And I like, I just put it on the other side too. 6, 12, 13 and 3 eighths. So that's all you need to put on here. So now you made a template. And this is all you need to do your layout. Let's get started on the layout. So we're going to say that it's a, the building span, we're going to call it, we're going to call it a six foot building span. Six foot, the whole width of the building. The ridge is going to be in the middle, so that's three feet. We only need to be concerned with three feet because that's going to be the center. So we're going to have to take this template and move it a few times. I'm going to show you that now. Let me bring in the two by six. Okay, this part I like to, of the board, I, the rafter, I like to push it away from me just a little bit. And that's going to represent the ridge. We have to get this ridge marked from this template. Now how we're going to do that is when you put your template on, just like this, this is the long part, the 13 and 3 8 When you slide it down, if you made a mark here, that's your ridge. I don't want to waste any material. So you just take a scrap board and stick it on the bottom edge of your rafter and just follow this along. And slide it down just like that slide it down so you the tip of the paper of the template gets right at the edge this way you don't waste any of the board so here we are I'm gonna make a mark I'm gonna do this a little fast this way you can get your job done so that's our ridge we're gonna write ridge here put an R for ridge right here's your ridge now it's we have to move this down a few times because the span of the building is six feet and the middle where that ridge goes is only three feet so we're going to move this down three times to hit the building edge because it's a three there's three feet of run so let's move it one time let's mark it Okay, mark it here. I like to mark it all the way up. And we're going to mark one here. This is one. We're going to move it down another time. So you just slide it down. Hold it. And mark it. We don't need this straight edge anymore. Then we're going to we're going to slide it down again. And mark it. Okay, so that's marked one, two, three times. Now it's marked down three times. We got the ridge mark. We had we moved so we moved it one, two, three. This mark here is the end of the building. Okay, I'm going to show you that. This is where we're going to make our. This is where we're going to make our bird's mouth. The bird's mouth will go right here. The bird's mouth always goes on that side of the line, which is towards the ridge. So what you're going to do is. I like to just make on here. I'm going to I'm going to make a three and a half inch mark here because I want this rafter to sit on top of the wall plate, which is a two by four. I want it to sit 
nicely on there, three and a half inches. If I want it to be that I'm using half inch plywood, I can even go instead of three and a half, I can go four inches. But I'm just going to go three and a half. So we can even write three and a half. You take this template and you slide it down that plumb mark until you see how I'm sliding it down until this pencil mark hits the bottom of the rafter. And then you make a mark. That's going to be your seat cut. Right here, this is the seat cut. That's where your, this is where the rafter will sit on top of the wall plate. And this is the heel cut. This is where the edge of the building is. This is going to sit, actually going to touch the plywood outside of the building, the plywood. This is the heel. This is the seat. Now, if we cut it here, that'll be flush with the outside of the building. We don't want that. We want to have an overhang. I want a, in this case, a six inch overhang. So what I can do is I could take my ruler and measure six inches and put a mark. You don't measure this way. If you measure out this way and put a mark, it will be wrong. It has to be parallel with the heel cut. So this is plumb. A plumb mark has to be parallel. We hold it. Mark six inches. Then you slide down your your uh, template and make a mark. If you if this is where you want your rafter tail to end, you're all set. You could put a detail on here. You can do whatever you want. You can put a nice detail on it. But if you're gonna have a subfacia and a fascia board. You have to deduct that this way you're left with the proper overhang. So I just wanted to show you how to do that without any special tools. Again, this is a simple method which I don't think many people use because everyone that I know is familiar with having the tool for the trade, the right tool for the job. And then when they don't have that tool, they can get stumped and they'll have a problem. So I always like to be able to have another method, a backup plan for when I'm out at the job site. And this only requires the ruler and the pencil and you make yourself a template. So if you're going to have, this is a 612, if you're going to have a 712, you just change this will become a seven and you still always it's 12 because it's measured by each foot run you, it's one foot here and then each time you slide it down that will grow this much it grows 13 and 3 eighths in this this case so you're actually when you do the rafter you're actually when you mark it you're you're descending down the rafter you're starting actually at the ridge and going down Compared to when you do stairs, when you do your layout for your stairs, you start at the bottom and you lay out up to the top. So if you want to check out my stair video, that's good. It's a good video. But this is my quick video on how to get the job done with just three items. And check out, uh, look forward to your comments. Check out my email and my YouTube homepage. And if you like the video, like and subscribe. And don't forget to request a detailed drawing of some of my uh, rafter terminology and, and uh, some key, key things to help you with your project. Okay, well, take care. Thanks for watching.